So now I want us to, uh, I want to introduce the semantics, that is to say, uh, a specification of how we could uh, implement the evaluation function of terms, uh, which is basically the novelty here in Lambda app. So we have a new formalism, right? We have a new function that is just for terms. And we're going to have the old one that we had before for uh, expressions. We leave it unchanged. So there's nothing we need to change. The only thing we need to do is now create a new function um, that evaluates terms. So how is the function that evaluates terms different? Well, it takes as input, it has, again, two input parameters, which is the term that is currently evaluating and the environment that is currently ev evaluating. And then, as you will see here, the output are two output parameters. So as output, we're going to have a new environment and the return value. And why is that, you may wonder? Well, it's basically so that we can propagate um, any new variable binding introduced by a define. So let's see how that happens. Well, when you evaluate an expression, which is this what this rule is saying, the only thing you have to do is, well, you don't change the environment, so you return it as is. Um, so that's why the input environment is E and the output parameter is the same E. Okay, so then what, where do we get this V from in the output parameter? Well, the V you get it by evaluating E under the evaluate expression function, and that returns some value, which we return, right? So evaluating an expression um, by passing it to the eval term should return a pair, right? This pair that has the new environment and the value obtained by evaluating the expression E. Okay, so the next rule, we are specifying what happens when we meet a define. So if the input expression, the term, input term, is not an expression, but instead, if it is a define, what do we do? Well, we have to do a very simple thing, which is we need to first evaluate that expression, the basic definition, as a value, and we use our evaluate function to do that and we obtain some value v. So what do we do with this value? Now we use, we take the input environment and we return a new environment that extends it with the binding x to v, right? So the output is gonna be two things. New environment where we now are adding um, x bound to v, so we use hash set for that and the new value, which is going to be void, which we just saw how we could um, return that. And that's basically it. Finally, let's discuss the rule for the sequence. So what happens when we, we the input is a sequence? And as you recall, sequence is that struct that has f um, sec, right? It's this one. Okay, so if you find that, you find a sequence, then you are going to have inside of it two terms. T, let's call them T1 and T2. What we do first is we evaluate T1 with the input environment. And here we just call it E1 just for the sake of simplicity. So we pass E1 to recursively evaluate T1 with E1. What we get is a new environment, right? Because T1 could have been another define and that would may make an effect on an environment which we get the result from. And we have the evaluation of T1 as value 1. And we really don't do anything with this V1, it's discarded. So next what we do, we evalu evaluate the second term with the second environment, that is the output of the first call. So we pass this environment to here, and we evaluate the second term and we get a third environment. And this is going to be the environment that the, out, the final result is going to be, plus the V2 is going to be here. So essentially what you're going to return is whatever you return from evaluating T2. So to recap, 
you're going to evaluate t1 and you're going to assign that to a variable and from that variable you're going to pick the environment and you're going to pass it to t2 to the evaluation of t2 and return whatever the evaluation of t2 returns okay so this way we are able to propagate any changes that we do in a define from one sequence to, to from one term to the next okay in our next video we're going to see a few examples of how this works and why it works the way it does and finally why it doesn't do what record actually does <laughs>